Hey, this is Commander Matthew, and welcome back to Trek Back. Well, normally it's Trek Back Tuesday on this channel, but this time around it's Trek Back Wednesday because we have a special communication that came to us from Diamond Select Headquarters just in time for San Diego Comic-Con 2019. So today on this special edition of Trek Back Wednesday, we're going to be taking a look at Diamond Select's SDCC 2019 exclusive Golden the Starship Legends USS Enterprise NCC 1701C. So the C just debuted not that long ago in prototype form, and this is our first time actually getting our hands on this ship from Diamond Select. It's been a long time coming and a very welcome addition because this is actually one of my favorite Starship designs out there ever. Now you might notice Captain Andre is not here with us today because she's on an away mission, so as you know, when the captain's away, the commander will play. Where's my trombone? So previously we've looked at a few other ships in the Starship Legends line from Diamond Select, and you guys can check that out on our channel to see those. But this time around, we're going to have a special preview review, if you will, of this particular ship. But first, a few quick facts about the Enterprise-C. The first appearance of the Enterprise-C was in Season 3, Episode 15 of Star Trek The Next Generation, Yesterday's Enterprise, which aired on February 19th, 1990. Now, although that was actually the first time we saw the ship physically in the show, it had actually been in the background in the observation lounge of the Enterprise-D for quite some time. However, that design looked nothing like what we ended up getting on the Yesterday's Enterprise episode. The Enterprise-C was captained by Rachel Garrett, and in its original timeline, it was famous for responding to a distress call from a Klingon outpost where it was attacked by four Romulan ships and ultimately destroyed. Or at least presumably destroyed, because it ended up getting sucked into a temporal rift and a whole bunch of stuff happened which ultimately led to an alternate timeline happening when the Enterprise-D found it, and thus bringing us back the return of Denise Crosby as Tasha Yar. Now there's plenty more stuff that happened in that episode of Yesterday's Enterprise, but we're going to save it for the eventual review of the normal version of the Enterprise-C. But all you need to know is that Tasha Yar came back for at least a little while from the dead, uh, but didn't last too long. Sorry Tasha, just worked out that way. The destruction of the Enterprise-C ultimately led to the Treaty of Alliance with the Klingon Empire, who were very impressed with how the Federation responded to such an attack. So historically speaking, the Enterprise-C is a very important ship, because it was not only the predecessor to the Enterprise-D, it's also the bridge between the Enterprises and basically what we got from the original show, the Excelsior class, up into the Enterprise-D, the Galaxy class ship. So the Enterprise-C is an Ambassador class ship, and you'll see it's got a lot of things that are very similar to basically the Enterprise-D, the Enterprise-B, a little bit of the refit Enterprise-A. There's a lot going on in this ship, which I'm really excited to check out. So real quick, let's just take a look at the packaging. So as you can see, the Enterprise-C SDCC version has our same packaging we're going to get with every other ship from the Starship Legends line. This is the design aesthetic that CBS has gone with now, so uh, in this case it's the next-gen colors, which are the red, white, and blue. And we also have a lovely illustration of Jean-Luc Picard on the corner. This window packaging gives us a nice glimpse into the ship, but we'll take a look at a lot more of what's going on there once we undock this ship from the packaging. On the side of the packaging we have a nice illustration of Jean-Luc Picard next to another logo for Star Trek The Next Generation. And finally on the back we have a photo of the Enterprise C in all of its gold and glory, and some other information about the toy, and most importantly here, the SDCC 2019 exclusive logo. So with all the technical specs out of the way, let's go ahead and undock the Enterprise C from this packaging and take a look at her. Now something important to note, uh, this is again the first time we're seeing the Enterprise C from Diamond Select. However, the original time we saw this ship, it was the normal version. So that means at some point Diamond Select will be releasing the normal version of the Enterprise C, but when that's going to happen, we don't quite know just yet. I did send out an encoded communique over to Diamond Select headquarters at Starbase, whatever the heck, and they've not gotten back to me yet just because SDCC is right around the corner. They're probably all traveling and a little crazy right now. They've all got their hands full, so until they get done with the SDCC invasion, we'll have to wait. But I will update the description once I have some more information on this ship. So here we go. Let's go ahead and pull her out of the packaging and take a look at that ship. So Diamond is known for its twisty ties, and of course this Enterprise-C is no exception to the rule, but we only have two of them this time around, and that seems to be all that's holding her down. So I'm going to go ahead and work those off, and then I'll show you the ship entirely out of the plastic wrap. So the Enterprise-C is now out of the packaging, but first things first, let's take a look at the base that it comes with. The base is a Starfleet insignia, much like what we saw in the later Star Trek original series movies. Uh, this was the insignia of Starfleet at the time, so we've seen this kind of familiar looking logo I believe in Star Trek V and VI. And then basically all the ships after uh, and into Star Trek Next Generation had this. But by the time we got to TNG, they then switched to the familiar ellipse and this shape here. So it comes with this piece as well, which we're going to go ahead and fit together. And very simply, it should just slide right on in. And that'll be our base. And voila. Very simple. Very easy to assemble. Now this piece up here should move. Uh, in the past it has moved. 
It looks like, yes, this does as well. In the past, we noted that this piece over here was a little loose in some of the ones we looked at, but this time around, it's actually the opposite. It's very stiff, but that's a good thing because you want this to be stiff to support the weight of your Starship. Speaking of, let's get started with the Enterprise C. And here she is in all of her golden glory. So this ship is a little bit smaller than some of the previous ships that we've looked at, but not that much smaller. Uh, interestingly enough, it is basically the intermediate size between the Enterprise D and, of course, the Enterprise B. From basically the original Enterprise to the D, they all increased in size. And this one here, it's not quite as big as the D, but it's bigger than the rest, I believe. Over here, you can see the very round saucer section. We have our warp nacelles on each side. And again, this goes back to the design aesthetic of the original Enterprises. Initially, these warp nacelles were higher up and they were above the saucer section. But in the case of the Enterprise C, it was kind of trying to match the Enterprise D a little bit, so they moved them lower. We also have a look at our deflector dish over here, which again is very similar to the original Enterprise and just how very circular it is, as opposed to the more of the elliptical shape of the Enterprise D. So overall, I'm a big fan of the Enterprise C, and I'm loving this thing already. Uh, it's very light, which is also really nice, and again, it's going to mean it's going to really fit easily onto the space we have over here, which we'll get to in a second. So something that uh, you may have noted with other Starship Legends ships is that they all usually have some lights or some sounds. In this case, we don't have any of that here. Now, we looked at the SDCC 2018 Romulan Bird of Prey last year, and uh, that also did not have lights and sounds, but it had this like little button that we were able to press that ultimately did nothing. That was for the light and sounds in the original version. In this case here, uh, we've got a few things that look like they could have been where buttons are, but we don't have them on this version of the ship. So based on how these warp nacelles look, I kind of feel like these will light up on the sides potentially for the proper release. And based on how these shapes are over here, I'm thinking these will be buttons for sound effects over here, or at least this part will go down. And also the tips of the warp nacelles, they seem to be attached kind of differently there. You can kind of see like a little spot from where those would attach. So I'm thinking that will also be potentially light up in the final release. But again, hard to tell until it actually is released. Another throwback over here is that this piece is, again, very similar to the Excelsior class starships, but it's a little bit more squashed down in this case. Again, marrying essentially Enterprise B to the Enterprise D, and this being, again, the Enterprise C as repetitive as it sounds, you get to see the progression of where the ships went. The detail, as always, with everything Diamond Select does is amazing. I'm loving this, how this guy looks. It's also really fun to hold and just really a lot of fun to look at. I can already tell you it's going to be a really great addition to my Starship collection. I think you guys are going to like it too. Let's go ahead now and attach our ship to the base and take a look at how she looks once she's there. And this time around, it's very simple to put it on. It's a little squeaky, but she's in. And now the important question is, will it hold up its own weight? Yes, it does. And that is, again, the really cool thing about this base is that because it's on this ball joint here, you can get some pretty nice poses, and uh, it is still holding its, its shape, holding its weight. So we can get it over here, it can go down, it can go up, can have it tilt to the side. We've got a lot of nice options, but ultimately you can just have it hanging out like this, and that looks pretty good to me, if you ask me. Now, just because I happen to have it here, let's compare it to the Enterprise A, just in terms of the size and the shape of everything. And uh, again, you can kind of see it's, in terms of the size of it, they're pretty similar, in fact. Uh, but it is a little bit larger than the Enterprise A. And logically, the Enterprise B will be bigger than this, but not as big as that. So again, very cool that they're actually pretty close to being in scale with each other, I would say. Uh, just lining them up side by side over here, too, you can see just the overall mass of everything. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty accurate. I'm liking that a lot. Both ships are very cool. Uh, now, I'm not sure if they made any other golden ships yet, but maybe they will. It'd be a lot of fun to get some more variants actually in the gold. I wouldn't mind some of that. If this is going to be a direction they're going for con specials, I'm cool with that. So that's our quick preview review of the Enterprise C Golden Edition, which you can pick up at San Diego Comic Con 2019. You can find Diamond Select over at booth number 2607. So head on over there and tell them that Nerd News Today sent you. In addition to the Enterprise C, Diamond Select's going to have a bunch of other exclusives there. So let's run down that list real quick, too. Also available from the Diamond Select booth, the Real Ghostbusters Action Figures Spectral Ghostbusters box set for $120, which features four Ghostbusters made of ectoplasmic energy from the Citizen Ghost episode, as well as an angry Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and a Spectral Terror Dog. Also from Ghostbusters, you can pick up this four-pack of all four of the Ghostbusters for $80, featuring them in all of their slimed outfits. Lost in Space Vinnie Mates Retro B9 Vinyl Figure for $10, limited to 250 pieces. Another Vinnie Mate, this time from Forbidden Planet, the Retro Robbie Vinyl Figure, also for $10 and also limited to 250 pieces. The Invader Zim Vinnie Mates Extra Doom Vinyl Figure 2-pack set with the exclusive Extra Doom edition of Zim and Gurr for $20, limited to 250 pieces. John Wick Chapter 1 Vinnie Mates Vinyl Figure for $10, again limited to 250 pieces. An Iron Giant Vinnie Mate, a weathered Iron Giant version, vinyl figure for 10 bucks, and again, 250 pieces only for this one. Pacific Rim Uprising Battle Damage Gypsy Avenger action figure, 
for 20 bucks. Again, another 250 pieces only for this figure. Muppet Select Deluxe Messy Swedish Chef action figure for 30 bucks, limited to 500 pieces. This is going to be a must have for all you Muppet collectors out there and in general because this one's a hot one. Star Wars Concept Sand Trooper Mini Bust, designed by Gentle Giant Studios. This 6 inch bust is limited to 750 pieces and will sell at SDCC for $120. DC Premier Collection Harley Quinn Gem Edition statue. This is limited to 200 pieces and is sculpted by Claiborne Moore. This one goes for 200. Marvel Comics Gallery X Force X23 as Wolverine PVC diorama statue for $50, limited to 6,000 pieces. And I need to get my hands on this one somehow. That's some sharp dressing from X23. Terrible pun intended. In that same line, we have an SDCC X Force version of Deadpool, again for $50, this one limited to 10,000 pieces. The Legends in 3D Marvel Comic SDCC X-Force Deadpool half-scale bust for $150, limited to 1,000 pieces. DC Gallery Speed Force Flash Diorama Statue for $50, limited to 7,000 pieces. And lastly, Marvel Gallery Captain Marvel in her shield outfit for $50, limited to 4,000 pieces. So again, if you're headed to San Diego Comic-Con, check out Diamond Select at booth 2607 to pick up this Enterprise C and plenty of other really, really, really great items. Because Diamond Select really does have a lot of great stuff this year. And hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on some of these things after the event. But if not, well, good luck. And once again, this is our special preview review of the Enterprise C Golden Edition, which you can find at San Diego Comic-Con only in the Diamond Select booth. And this is definitely a favorite of mine. Again, not just because I love the Enterprise C, but because this has just got great sculpting, great attention to detail. I'm loving all the little bits and pieces I'm finding on this thing. It's a great ship. Will look great on display in the box. However you want to have it, hanging from the wall. Cut it in half and nail it to the wall, just like they had it on the observation deck of the Enterprise D. There's plenty of things you can do with this baby here. I'm loving it. And I'm very, very excited to see how they're going to do the Enterprise C in its normal version once that is released. Potentially by the fall, let's just say. But again, we will update you guys once we have that information. So make sure to check out the description below. And if you want to stay up to date on everything that's happening San Diego Comic Con 2019, make sure to stay tuned to this channel here for all the latest news and updates. Even though we're not going to be in San Diego this year, we will be doing some videos and maybe some live streams this year to update everybody on what's been going on at the show. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel so you can get all the latest news as it happens. So I'm Commander Matthew, and on behalf of Captain Andrea, who cannot make it here today, thank you guys for watching Trek Back Wednesday. We'll see you guys soon with our regularly scheduled Star Trek content and everything else we do here on Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching and have fun at SDCC. And don't forget to buy me something, please. Like, that Ghostbusters set would be really great. Any one of them is good. Just go ahead, please. Thank you.